So let's look at two more methods to compare numbers. And we have the isBelow method, and that checks if an input value is below or less than a certain benchmark value. So again, we have this benchmark value of two, so that's the number we wanna be below. Then we have an input value, and I've just set that to three here. And what this method will do is it will run the, um, I guess the operator less than, and it'll just check if input is less than benchmark. And if that returns true, this is below test will pass. Otherwise it will throw an error. So if I run this now, we can see that this is returned false because three is not less than two. And therefore this is below test has failed. Now, if I change this um, value here to two, and I save that and run it again, we can see that it still fails because two is it's equal to the benchmark value of two, but it's not less than. And remember, when we're using is below, it uses less than and not less than or equal to. So that's why this test fails. Finally, um, if I change this input value to something like one, and then if we think about this, one less than two will evaluate to true. So this is below test should now pass. And if I run this now, we can see that the, bo the Boolean is true. And yeah, all the tests have passed. So that's the is below method. Another method that we can use is the is at least. And is at least checks if um, the input value is greater than or equal to the benchmark value. So it's at least the benchmark value. And I can say something like the input is um, not, if it fails, I can say the input is not at least, or I can say the input is less than it. Like they both mean the same thing, I guess. But once again, when we're writing our error messages, we want to contradict the test rather than assume the opposite is true. So if I run this now, we can see that it fails because if you do one is greater than or equal to two, that will return false. So this method will fail. Um, if I change this to two, this Boolean expression should now pass and should be true now because one, two, sorry, two is is equal to two. So the greater than or equal to is true here. So this should run okay. And as you can see, it passes. If I put something here like three or anything above that, um, and I run it again, we can see that three or anything above three is greater than or equal to two. So this is a, so three is at least two and that still holds. So if we look at the challenges now, we're down here. So the first, again, um, we have to make these four and tests pass and we have um, inputs and benchmark values and we have to either give them to is below or is at least to make them pass. So the first one, we have benchmark value of five and the input value is the length of the string world. And the world has one, two, three, four, five characters right here. So we have this, this, this is five right here and this is five. So if we have five and five here, if we give it to is below, is five less than five? No, so that will be false and is below will fail. Then if we give it is at least, is five greater than or equal to five? Yes, that's true. So this this will return true right here and um, is at least will give a pass. So we can give it to is at least. Here we have um, two times and then math.random and the benchmark value of zero. Remember math.random returns a random number between zero and one. So we have a random number here that's less than one and we multiplied by two. So this, this number right here is a positive number and we have zero right here. So if we check, if we do check this, if so if we give it is below, it'll check if this positive number is less than zero and that's impossible. So this will return false. So is below will fail here. If we give it to is at least, it'll check if this positive number is greater than or equal to zero, which is which will be, be true. And so this will return true. And even if this, um, since math or random can return zero, even if this was zero, two times zero is still equal to zero. So um, greater than or equal to will still return true. So we can give this to is at least if we want to ensure a pass. I just realized I have a typo here. 
Okay, so now we have five percentage two. And remember, um, this modulo operator means that you divide this number, you divide five by this number here, and it's the remainder. So if we divide five by two, there's two twos that go into five, which gets you to four, and then we have a remainder of one. So this will evaluate into one. And then we have two right here. So if we were to give this to is below, it'll check if one is less than two, and that will return true. So that is below will pass in this case. So we can give it to is below. Um, finally, we have two thirds here, and we also have um, one here. And remember JavaScript, when you give something like this, it does integer division. This is not equal to 0 0.6666 or whatever. This is equal to the integer division of 2 divided by 3. So that's simply how many 3s go into 2. And um, not even one 3 goes into 2. So this will be 0 remainder 2. Again, this is not 0 0.666, it's 0 remainder 2. And it's a 0 part that matters here when we're doing division like this. Not and we're not using this percentage. So we have zero here and we have one here. And if we were to give this to is below, zero is less than one. So this will return true and therefore is below will pass. So we can give this one to is below. I think that's true anyway, and um, we'll see what happens. So that's all of them now. So if I copy this and paste it into here, Yep, we can see that they were the correct solutions, so now we can move on.